transcribed into A. R A N K. R A N K. But it was transcribed with the 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 A. The A. So right. Yes. Yeah. When I that's, did it, it was that's, that's, that that's the that's the co-articulation. You're hearing the nasal piece that makes okay. it sound different from A because it's like rang. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's the the nasalization of the co-articulation makes it sound different. Yeah. Okay. I think that's dialectical. A lot of people say rank. Say again. Rank. You say rank. It could be a dialectical variation too, yeah. yeah. So the worksheets are like standard American English. So if you have any sort of dialectical variation, it's, it could be different for you too. Okay. So but a lot of that, me, that, that, to me that would be rant, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, and that's, that's why I gave the example of cat and can, yeah. because it sounds like two different vowel sounds, right. but it's not. It's just the, the co-articulation makes it sound like a different sound. Okay. Mm -hmm. Another question, another question. Uh, uh, on these as well for the the regular roof sound, mm -hmm. they're using just the regular lowercase r. Mm -hmm. but whenever I upside down? Yeah. Yeah. Is that just a so some people are very picky about that. So what she's talking about is the um, producing the er sound um, this way um, versus like an upside down r. Have you seen either way? Like so. Technically, what's that? Like if it's a syllabic R or something? Well, technically the upside down R is the correct way to produce the Eng standard American English er sound. Like you would hear at the beginning of the word like rain or run or run. This is considered the trill R, the r sound. <laughs> but it has become common practice clinically to use the just a regular R. And so I'm fine with either convention because um, it's more of a preference when it's especially helpful whenever you're transcribing English versus Spanish articulation. Um, but for our purposes, if you learn the upside down R convention, I know you can't see me, Stephanie, but you can watch the video later. Um, <laughs> the upside down R is totally fine to use and it's actually correct. Um, the regular, like what looks like a normal lowercase R in orthography um, is representative of a, of a different sound, but it's just become clinically and common in our field to use it uh, to represent our, our, our. Um, so feel free to use either. This is one of the things that it's, I can't be too nitpicky about because it's become just this clinical um, convention. Yeah. When I took phonetics, there was like this great debate about um, which to use for really the E sound, like the lowercase I or the uppercase I. For really? For really. Okay, so it depends on how you say it, because I say really. really, so I would use the lowercase i. But if you say it the way you said it, really, it would be the uppercase i. So it depends on how you say it. Okay. Yeah. Mine is more of an e sound, really, and yours was more of an i, really. Yeah, like the guy from BG wrote the book, and he was like, oh, like, he thought we should always use uppercase i. Was it Tim Brackenberry? No. Oh, maybe. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> Final sound there? Oh, did you mean the final vowel? Yes. Oh, okay. So that's another stress thing. I thought you meant the the mm -hmm. um, the first vowel. So the final vowel e is another um, stress um, indicator. So um, when it when a word ends in the e sound, um, like I guess I'll use the example of really. <laughs> um, so you would hear the e sound at the end, but because it is um, an unstressed syllable, you should use the capital lowercase i. But that's another one of those things that clini clinically has kind of lost its convention. And so I, I try to be very mindful of what you need to use clinically. Um, it is the correct convention to do a capital lowercase i for the e sound at the end of a word when it's unstressed. Um, but I'm fine with you doing the lowercase <coughs> i for the e sound, which does normally represent the e sound, um, because it's it's a common clinical convention to just use that E sound. Right. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you for the clarification. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, maybe this is similar, but what is the difference between the diphthong? Dip. Sorry, I said it wrong. Um, That's right. It's the lowercase e i. Yeah. So like the a. Mm -hmm. day. Yeah. I'm glad you brought that up. Okay. So let's talk about diphthongs for a second. So there are a few diphthongs that can be represented as monophthongs, but also as diphthongs. So we have the A, which is like a regular lowercase e, 
makes the A sound. And you'll also see that represented as a diphthong like uh, lowercase e, uppercase, small uppercase i. Have you seen, you've seen both of these? Um, so the difference here is this is more of when we have the, the true on glide, off glide of when we're saying hey, if we have the a, we have that glide from one sound to another, as opposed to when we have just a, um, like a short a sound. So I almost always say it this way, no matter what the articulation, co-articulation is. There are some dialects that have this by itself without the off glide. And so, so my preference, I almost exclusively use, I don't care which one you use. It's completely up to you. It's whatever your, um, the convention you were trained in is fine with me. So if you learn this way exclusively, use it. If you learn this way exclusively, use it. Um, but just be consistent. That's my only request. So if you, if you learned a different convention, just be consistent in using it. Because if you use these both at the same time in a quiz or in a sample, I'm going to assume they mean different sounds and not that you're just transcribing them differently. Um, <coughs> so I actually can't give an example of this because I can't produce that in a word by itself because I always, in my dialect, produce it this way as an on glide, A. Yeah. like halo. Halo. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's not, it's really hard to produce in a word by itself. This one by itself, yeah. Hey, yeah. I don't know. Another thing about diphthongs that I wanted um, to bring to your attention is the tie that you might see. So you might see a tie used here or here. And this is to indicate that this is one sound. This is one diphthong that should be produced as one sound is what these indicate. You might see it at the top. You might see it at the bottom. It depends on how you're trained. Um, I don't have a preference if you use these at all. Um, if you've never seen this, forget you're seeing this now. Um, if, you, if you use it and you like to use it, that's fine by me. I do like to use it because I like to indicate that it's one sound as opposed to two vowel sounds um, back to back. Um, so I use it, you do not have to, um, because it, it really, clinically, it doesn't really matter. It's just indicating that these two, this should be a diphthong. That's all it's indicating. So again, my only preference is that you use, you be consistent with what you use. If you use this, every single time you use a diphthong, you should use that tie. If you don't ever use it, don't ever use it. That makes sense? Yeah. So, okay. Use it though if we hear two different sounds, but. Um, so it's, what it represents is that this is one sound. Okay. And so I always assume that it's one sound because it's very rare to have like these two vowels by themselves so anyhow. For every A sound in every word, you always use that. You never put I don't, no. But if you were taught that way and your ear hears it better that way, it, it means the same thing and so clinically it's just not a huge deal. This is more of a big deal whenever we're thinking about um, comparing languages and doing it for a linguistics point of view to really look at the different nuances between languages. Um, so it, for cl clinical purposes it's just not a huge deal to make that differentiation but I do exclusively use this because that's that's the way that I produce it and that's the way that I almost always hear it produced. Um, a similar example is O. So you'll hear it, you'll see it as just an O by itself and then this is O when you have like the on glide, off glide, O, both sounds. I almost always say it this way and hear it this way so this is what I use and then the same goes with the tie here, either use it all the time or don't use it at all because all it's saying is this is one sound which I already know. Make sense? Okay, some other diphthong things. I'm glad you brought that up because I wanted to, um, to talk about these. Uh, maybe I have this here. Um, this is one I that doesn't stand alone, so you always need <coughs> both of these in the word I. So as opposed to these where like this says A, this is A, this says O, this is O, this is just I. It's not, you can't separate these and have similar sounding sounds, because this is ah, and this is I. So this is a sound by itself. Um, and then, and you don't have to use the, the tie, same story. This is oi, this is ow. And so an example of this, you know, we talked before about this background sound, like in coffee, that I don't produce. 
So if you're transcribing my speech and it's a back rounded vowel, I don't produce that, so it would be ah. But this oi sound, you do use this symbol. It's not making the aw sound, it's making the oi sound. So you would still use this symbol. So I don't want to confuse, confuse you by saying never use this sound if you're transcribing my speech, because you will use that symbol for, to represent that diphthong, oi. Oi bay. Make sense? <laughs> and this is owl. Uh, we talked about er and er. Um, okay, so here's another example of listen closely to the speaker and to not let your ear, your dialect, or the orthography get in the way. So if I say the sentence, I saw a dog, when I'm transcribing that sentence, this word, a, uh, the way I said it, could be transcribed as I saw a dog or I saw a dog. It depends on how I said the sentence. So. You have to listen closely to how I said it and not just transcribe what you think you heard or what you would have said, like, oh, I see a dog, as opposed to I saw a dog. Very different sounds. So make sure that you're listening closely to how I'm producing it so that you can accurately reflect that. Make sense? Okay, so let's take a quick break. Or do you want to do the quiz first? I think let's just take a quick break and then come back. Okay. Oh. Oh, okay. Five and one 
silly, okay. and they've exactly started being like, well, normally we right. put the kids yeah. to bed yeah. before, yeah. before you get here, but you're better at it than I am, so. <laughs> Once a week, but with the snow days and everything, it's been like my baby sat the whole snow day while they had no school. Really? Yes. Were they going crazy? The parents They were fine for me. I had therapy. I have feelings 
about that. So I have a hotel, but it's not actually a lot. Why do you think it's just the one that we have? Yeah. I've always been off the range, so that's a nice, like, green on the outside of the road. Just weird. Okay, I just thought that. I don't want to be negative about it this early. I know. It's perfect. I'm not really. It's just not. But I think it's going to be a little bit of a balance. Like, I think it's going to be a little bit of a balance. I think it's going to be a little bit of a balance. I think it's going to be a little bit of a balance.